Boris Stravinsky, a giant of the 20th century, has just entered Massey Hall in Toronto. In the next three hours, the CBC Symphony Orchestra and the festival singers will be required to put on recording tape once and for all the definitive interpretation of a Stravinsky classic. It is a major musical event. The meticulous preparation is almost complete. It is supervised by Stravinsky's protege, Robert Kraft, and by John McClure of Columbia Records. Stravinsky is waiting. Maestro, I wanted to meet Julian Breen. Very happy to meet you, Maestro. I wanted to meet you so much. We were at Dartington. Uh, I was there when you Together, were there. Yeah, yeah. That was right. Yeah. And we never met, actually. Yeah. And I always wanted to very much. Yeah. How are you? Are you enjoying your fine. time? I am fine. You are, and you're working very hard and recording away. All my life. Yes. Julian Bream is the world's best player of the lute. I always wanted to uh, play to you sometime on the lute because I read that uh, you uh, find the lute a very beautiful and expressive instrument. Oh, yes, of course. But when? Well, any time, any time, if I you have had a minute. I have no time. I'm sure it's very difficult for you. I have no time. There are people who have time. Yes. There are people who have money. Yes. There are people who have many things, you know. Yes. I have some things. But you, yes, but you've got great gifts, which is more than the time or the money. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and you're making a film here. Well, they, they are filming you out here. And, uh, which film? I don't well, think Well, I see thousands of cameras. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my business. No. I Would you like to see a loot? Uh, Would you like to see my oh, loot? Oh, yeah. I brought it with me. Oh, nice. Stravinsky is excited by the physical presence of musical instruments. The lute, he says, is perhaps the most perfect and certainly the most personal instrument of all. It was written much more for the lute than for the piano. I'd love some time to play you a little piece. Yeah. Perhaps I could play a big beginning now a little bit. Um, the problem with this instrument is so many strings, it takes a lifetime to tune it. <laughs> uh, the recording session has been done tonight, gentlemen. This is a little pavan. Stravinsky remembers back into the summer forests of Imperial Russia when an old peasant who was mute clucked his tongue and smacked his armpits to make music for the children. He remembers even earlier a song of some peasant girls coming home from the fields and how he delighted his parents that evening by repeating the song, although he had not yet learned to talk. Thank you very really much. wonderful to meet you, sir. Thank you very much for playing, for coming. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, very glad to meet you. Now we have to work ourselves. The world pays homage. It was different on a Paris night in 1913. A confused and furious audience drowned out his music. Barbaric, they said. But soon the world decided it would be best to listen. Good afternoon.
No. No rehearsing. Just playing through. Yes, what do you say? Oh. Oh. Stand by, please, everyone. Stravinsky, Symphony of Psalms, first movement, take one. that of, a, of, of an extraordinary bird or a very light bird and of an insect, an extraordinary insect. I was always uh, very much interested by the fact how much he physically, his movements, his way of smiling, his wit, the way of talking, his mannerisms even, resemble his music. Nicholas Nabokov, Director General of the World Congress of Cultural Freedom, has known Stravinsky since 1925. I was always surprised when, to, when he, I see him conduct, when Stravinsky conducts, the way he turns his right hand in the, uh, uh, to show the contrapuntal part of the rhythm. It's so essentially the rhythm itself. It's uh, you, you, the, the visualization of that rhythm. That is another thing which always uh, excited me best of uh, uh, seeing Stravinsky conduct. As a matter of fact, I think that his conducting is very interesting. <laughs> not a virtuoso of the art of conducting, but I think that this particular virtue which Stravinsky is conducting, Stravinsky's presence has, that people are then solely concerned with the problem of how to make music. And the music is not written on the face of the conductor, as many conductors think, but it's written in the part it's written down in the part. And the conductor is there to help realize what's written, to help the musician realize what's written in the part. And there, Stravinsky gives a very good moral lesson to conductors. Excuse me, but I ask for accents here. Her accents for Santo Piano, and you play piano. Once more, 24. Give me Sforzando piano, each time as it is written. That's good. Yes. Accent. 
The same with the ladies. Piano, subito piano. Well, Stravinsky is uh, is an extraordinary flower. It's, it's a sort of an extraordinary plant, a plant uh, which always wants, with its roots, to find fresh water. Uh, fresh juices in, in the earth and needs them for his own nourishment. Uh, it, it is uh, sort of, Stravinsky, I would say, is exactly diametrically the opposite form of genius than is, uh, for example, Wagner. Was Wagner, I suppose. Wagner is completely, I mean, uh, once he had um, covered the field of Mr. Meyerbeer, and um, there is n no relation to anything which he needs. He feeds on himself somehow. He's a, he's a plant uh, sitting tightly on his piece of soil and doing well. Stravinsky, on the contrary. Stravinsky is a, is a curious phenomenon. That he needs an enormous amount of heterogeneous, uh, uh, um, uh, heterogeneous uh, nourishment for his talent. <laughs> No, I said move my move. Oh. Good. Maestro, could you pick up the phone? Move the tuba back a little, I think. That's when when was it too much? It was um, um Maestro, I think we do it once more and we'll have it. day out of New York and bound for Hamburg. Stravinsky has crossed this ocean 97 times. He has always had to travel and has always hated it. We can ja hier allenfalls damit rechnen, dass wir hier ziemlich in Betrieb kriegen. Lifeboat drills for a man of more than 80 years are events to be ignored. So are the other trials of the sea. And I never am seasick. Never. I am sea drunk. <laughs> Quite different. You're good health. How do you explain the miracle, uh, the phenomenon of music? Uh, why should there be music? Is it possible to live without music? It isn't for you, obviously, but uh, it, it what's very difficult to answer uh, because uh, I was always with music, and so I cannot imagine myself to be without music, without any music, without even bad music. Who created music? Oh, I, uh, uh, listen, uh, listen, that, that, you know, uh, higher, uh, hierarchy, 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 I don't know the hierarchy. It's the hierarchy of creation. 
yeah, of the creation. It was created probably by God. And I think, I even not think, but I'm sure that when we read about the creation of the world, that it was created just a big drum and cymbals and music. Thanks very much. Stravinsky. Tribal activities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Symphony of Psalms, second movement, take one. In my eye. Good, serves you right. The son of an opera singer, he was raised in St. Petersburg. A manufacturer of galoshes lived below. The Tsar would drive by, his horses hung with blue nets to catch the flying snow. Then, in the spring, the ice would break with a single great crack, and barges would carry scenery down the Krukov Canal to the opera. He studied two days a week with Rimsky-Korsakov. In 1910, he left Russia for Paris. The Firebird brought immediate fame, great friends, and memories. Of Diaghilev, the impresario, who had a servant to do his praying. Of Cocteau, and of being arrested with Picasso when they relieved themselves outside the Naples Opera. And being stopped at a frontier when he could not convince Italian police that a sketch by Picasso was not a plan of fortifications. Switzerland, the Riviera, and here in Paris in 1927. He has seen Tchaikovsky and Ibsen and the heavy veils of Bernhardt. He has felt the soft fingers of the sculptor Rodin and the hard eyes of Benito Mussolini. He has known the friendship of Ravel and Debussy and the love of beautiful women. Vera de Bosse, painter and second wife to Stravinsky. When uh, I was in Paris, I knew very well Diaghilev. He called me and said, are you free for dinner today? And I said, yes, come, we will go with Novel, with Baxt, and with uh, Stravinsky to a little restaurant in the Montmartre. The dinner was very gay. Stravinsky was moody. I don't know yet. Something happened in the family, or I don't know what happened. It was rather moody. And uh, Diaghilev told me even uh, uh, he has some difficulties. And he didn't say what. So be gay and friendly. This is all. <clears throat> so we met the first time. It was very gay dinner. And then uh, later uh, he came to. What year was that, may I ask? It was 21. 21. Yes. And, and you, you had come to Paris when, in 1920? And uh, then uh, Diaghilev spoke very much about the Sleeping Beauty he will make in, in London. Mm -hmm. And he asked me if I want to be the queen there. You know, uh, there's no, not very much dancing, no, nothing, only pantomime. And what did you say, you know? da? <laughs> I said, so there was Sergei Pavlovich. <laughs> yeah, очень <laughs> тронуто. And then I started to see Stravinsky all the time. She used to play chess with the great Prokofiev and charm the novelist Tomas Mann, who thought her the perfect Russian. She has been married to Stravinsky since 1940. And I went with him very often to the rehearsals and to the essayage of the costumes and. Uh, then it was this way. <laughs> it started this way. 
Can you imagine the situation of a, I mean, it's really unimaginable when I think about it, a man of the valor of, of Stravinsky, a man of the thoroughness of, uh, of work, who produced in his early age three works which uh, were, well, let us say, real bestsellers on the international market, Petrushka, Oiseau de Feu, and Le Sacre du Printemps. Can you imagine that these three works, because of the stupidity of the, the Russia, of Tsarist Russia and then the Soviet Union, uh, continues that stupidity, not belonging to the Berne Convention, is not covered by copyright. Can you imagine that when he saw uh, people like Strauss and even Ravel getting wealthy and rich on one or two works, Ravel and Ballero, Strauss and uh, his uh, two or three of his operas, and he, Stravinsky, having to struggle financially for two-thirds of his life. He was really in, in a difficult financial condition. You know that in 1917, 1918, uh, people were collecting money for the Stravinsky family to survive. I mean, Stravinsky, at the time he was writing L'Histoire du Soldat, had a very hard time financially. People say, yes, but he always lived in a kind of luxurious way. Well, this is none of people's business. He wants to live that way. He was accustomed to live that way. And he should be living that way. A man like Stravinsky should be living without having constantly the thought, my God, what will happen to me? Stravinsky saw his first ballet probably at a very tender age. I know that uh, he saw the big Tchaikovsky ballets when he was eight years of age. And he became an amateur of, of ballet as an American child would have of uh, baseball perhaps. At, by the time he was 10, he knew all the standard ballets. He knew the steps, the positions. In fact, if you watch him take a bow at the end of a concert or <clears throat> here in Hamburg at the end of the first performance, he'll surely come on stage to take a bow. He bows in the tradition of the Mariinsky Theater. But um, he has a very keen eye for um, classic ballet. However, at the time that Stravinsky's first ballets um, broke upon the scene, the classic ballet was already in some, some decline. There was interesting new music was not being written for it, and um, it had come into a sort of barren period. That, of course, is um, the um, achievements of Diaghilev, who um, who started, who had the idea, who saw in Stravinsky somebody who could um, rejuvenate the ballet. For the first time in the history of music, you have a major composer appearing through the ballet. And a work like Balanchine's choreography to Stravinsky's movements for piano and orchestra, this seems to me almost more successful than some overtly composed ballet pieces. Stravinsky's ballet music is said to be the greatest ever written. He has been called a platinum grasshopper scooting along at the head of the pack. Still, he is furiously attacked. One critic explained that it is hard to make a father image of an insect. Balanchine of New York, a master of movement, is one of the few who has kept pace with Stravinsky. Unlike an earlier collaborator, Nijinsky, Balanchine has a deep and full understanding of music. He is, says Stravinsky, the perfect collaborator. Together they have dominated ballet for 40 years. There 
our young friends, too. Robert Kraft, conductor, composer, and teacher, wrote to Stravinsky in 1947 for advice. They met. And since that meeting, Kraft has been musical assistant and constant companion. He has introduced Stravinsky to new trends and new people in music, and has helped the old man to a second life. Another young friend was Dylan Thomas. They were going to write an opera together. A telegram announced that Dylan was dead, and the old man wept. You're halfway through, and the session is two thirds over. Right One third through, and the session is two thirds over. Symphony of Psalms, third movement, take one. concerned with, and profoundly concerned, with uh, everything which has to deal with uh, belief, with, uh, with the Christian faith. And there is an there is probably when you can, one cannot say, speak of Stravinsky as a religious composer. One can say that, however, very few composers in our time have dealt with religious subjects in his art, as did Stravinsky. Now, pray for this transition to work. I told them all what to do. Everyone, please, here, will cross their fingers, except the control man who may need his. Q raised the chorus. 
No, maybe not. They were all right before. Wait a second. One and a half on cue. While I got the tempo. Do it now. Do it now. Okay, excuse me. What is the timpani uh, doing with the 13? It's not correct. Listen, wonderful tempo, everybody. It's very good up to here. Let them start right on 13. It's a complete cutoff. Can we start right at 13 on tempo? Tempo uh, 80. I give you one bar for nothing. Thirteen. For, for who is this? Okay. In that case, you do this. If you want to do that, you do this. It's not any good anywhere. Five before nine. Go ahead. I do think it. maybe it's better now to go back there. If we're going to redo chorus here. Let's go back um, to the bar before nine. Chorus, very careful not to drag at your entrances. What is the union on the hour break? <coughs> All right, let's start one before nine, please. Everyone stand by. No, I mean, uh, between sessions, I think they're supposed to have an hour. I give you one bar for nothing in four. And the bar before nine is in three, in six. Here we go. Third movement, Symphony of Psalms, insert two, take one. All right, bar before nine. In third movement, insert two, take two. Two feet. Clean start, bar before nine, last time. Third movement, insert two, take three. Jeez. What's the confusion? Is it giving you a bar for nothing? It's no good. It's just no good. Stop it. This is hopeless. Maybe it's not a good place to start. Let's start at eight. Not and can we have a little more bass drum, please? Two before nine. I don't like eight. Six is better. Where? Six. It's all right. Do it at six. All right, announce it. Yeah. Okay. Six. Stop. Stop a minute. Six. Yes. Hello? Six. Six is OK. Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Six. Let's do it. Stand by, please. Number six. We'd better talk to Harry if he's here. Third movement, Symphony of Psalms, insert two, take four. The crowds for concerts grow greater, but there are fewer old friends for lunch. Nabokov is one of the last remaining old friends. Très content de le voir, nous sommes des ah, vieux amis. Ce sont des appareils enregistreurs, enregistre, c'est terrible, on ne peut rien dire. Non, on ne peut rien dire, on peut dire seulement des choses, euh, oui. des choses très aimables. <rire> des choses très aimables. Du reste, je n'ai pas l'intention de dire le contraire, parce que ce sont des gens très aimables. J'ai beaucoup de plaisir à les voir, tout le temps. Et maintenant, je ne savais pas que vous étiez déjà là. J'étais là, en bas, je ne savais pas. Vous aviez le masseur. 
J'ai eu le masseur qui m'a massé. J'ai très mal à la tête aujourd'hui. Je vais nulle part. Je reste dans ma chambre. J'ai mis la cravate pour être poli. Je vais manger parce que j'ai faim. J'ai très mal à la tête. C'est tout, messieurs, pour aujourd'hui. Alors, vous allez. Voilà. Maintenant, vous pouvez finir, me donner la main. Vous pouvez le faire? No, sorry. You, you don't speak French. So I will translate it. You can finish the business. Yes. Give me your hand. Shake the hand. I shake your hand. Thank you. It would not be possible for us to photograph a little more some of your conversation with Mr. Nabokov. You talk Russian? Yes, that would be marvelous. We would love to have some film of you talking Russian. No, really? Yes, it would be very good for us. Would you, like, would you like to sit down, please? And be, no. be, be comfortable. Just forget that. us. I didn't know that you yes. wanted. Yes. I didn't know that you wanted. Do you yeah, want, yeah. Do you yeah. want yeah. just a drop of scotch? No, it should not. Wonderful. Chudna means wonderful in Russia. If you want, I translate what I say in Russia. I will translate you. I am a professional translator. I have no glasses. I have only one glass. And we will drink from this glass. Let me give you that's our glass. If you want. Yeah, I have to go with the British. That's done. Now, we can sit down. You see, Russian is a language full of French words, like for example, sartir. Sartir. Sartir means WC. But means also get. <laughs> it means. Sortir. <laughs> Sortir where? To WC. <laughs> How do you feel, dear? Actually, no, really. Very uh, very and really you are looking nice well. You are looking well. <clears throat> Everybody says to me, you are looking so well. And I say, I think so, but I don't feel well at all. I cannot, stand, I, I cannot stand this fighting kite. <laughs> this Afghan fighting kite in Russian. Yeah, serious. Serious. Uh, this Afghan fighting kite in English. Uh, 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 dampness. Dampness. Damp weather. Damp weather. Maggi damp weather. Yeah. And this Afghan fighting kite are uh, 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 Französisch. Französisch. Humidité. Humidité. Bravo. Les Afghans italiens, humidité. Humidité. They are good health. They are good health, gentlemen. Ah, que vous chutez pas, que tu n'as pas, non? Et tu as une chute. Non? Ah, que que. Wonderful to see you. Я не могу говорить, когда приезжают стоят все эти аппараты. Ну да, за это аппараты, да. Я... Теперь я к ним так привык. Да, а они за вами ходят, как, как они собачки, всюду, да? Они всюду, да, всюду ходят, с Канады. Привет, они с Канады, мне на пароходе. А на пароходе с вами ходят? Да, мои, да, тут и повсюду. Мы только уезжали на вакансы куда-то. Можно еще быть? Так, конечно, милый мой, для того и делать, что пить. Я вам хотел привезти, но не нашел в Берлине. Замечательный скотч, называется чай Чивас Спешл. Чивас Ригл. Чивас Ригл. Замечательный скотч. Чивас Ригл, это мой скотч. Это чудо. Чивас Ригл, это мой скотч. Я пойду тут, достану. Now, you have to drink enough. You are, you are too, uh, too, uh, как говорят, uh, придержанный. Uh, uh, you are much too uh, assiduous, to assiduous, no, придержанный. Uh, we say придержанный. Like when you, when, we say, uh, when you say a boy is uh, very uh, studious, not studious, uh, but uh, assiduous, uh, assiduous when, he does his, when he does his work too well. Yes. What's the word for that? I will tell you, I have a dictionary, always with me. 
Russian, English, English, Russian dictionary. Yes. But Miller? I don't know. Over here. That's an old dictionary. But with a new prophesy. I told you that last. Pridiashmi. Pri. Glaževic. Pri. Žigač. K. R. Pri. Ličestovac. Ne dojš, dojš. Ne dože. Pri lavak. Pri ležni. Diličent. Diličent. You are too diligent, gentlemen. Which means pri ležni in Russia. Not so easy to pronounce for you. How do you say it? Pri ležni. Pri ležni. No, pri ležni. Pri ležni. That's right. You know, they are you are a local born. Accent grand. Ah, you are a Ukrainian. Yeah. You, you know, uh, Canada is full of very dangerous Russians. You have dual <laughs> boards in Canada. Yes. And I was at a meeting. I, I, know, at a Tolstoy, I, I told you the story. When there yeah. was a Tolstoy conference in Venice, a lady, Duhabor, in front of all Isaiah Berlin was there, and uh, there were all kinds of people, were like uh, Dos Passos writers. And suddenly a lady got up and said, And now, ladies and gentlemen, I must undress and be naked, and I can advise you to do the same, because we must be naked in front of God. And to which, uh, uh, to which Branca said, oh, per favore, non, non, non facciamo la, in the Fondazione Cini. <laughs> they walk naked around. Yes, they give us a lot of trouble. <laughs> Long trouble, yes. yes. And you know whom you owe them to? Um, no. I Tolstoy. Don't... Yes. Tolstoy was he paid author. for that trip. He paid the whole thing. He paid the whole thing for them to come to, to, to Canada. A naked country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are naked before God. Yeah. But where is God? 15, Ed Slate, 2nd Orwan Stravinsky. No, what? Did you tell him a cocktail? No, I didn't. I seem very concerned. It was natural rasness cocktail. That? Nothing with you? The Bura can't No, Jean a eu une attack. Oui, et euh, on pensait qu'il va mourir, mais il n'est pas mort, et, mais on croit qu'il restera complètement paralysé. Non. Oui. Non. Oui. Mais quelle horreur. C'est affreux. Mais quelle horreur. Et alors Mais qu'est-ce qui est arrivé Parce que c'est le cœur. Euh, euh, je ne sais ou, pas. Non, ou peut-être c'est ce que j'ai, moi. Mais heureusement, j'avais un air... Non, mais vous avez une artère toute petite. Oui. Non, ce n'est pas petit ou grand. Il y a deux artères. Oui. Alors on a dit, heureusement que vous avez celle-ci, mais pas celle-là. Oui. C'est ici. Oui. Alors, n'est-ce pas Elle s'est arrêtée pour 20 secondes. Parce qu'il y avait un crampe. Le sang ne passait pas. Et j'ai une demi paralysée. C'est pourquoi je marche avec une canne. Oui, mais Jean a, a oui, une, pra une paralysie généralisée. Mais elle est l'esprit. Euh, je on ne sais pas. Pendant huit jours, on ne pourra rien dire. Il est dans un état de... Il était dans le coma. Maintenant, il est en dehors du coma. Mais on ne peut encore rien dire. Et on attend si certains médicaments agiront ou pas. Il y a quatre médecins... Stravinsky has moved a great distance. His first wife and a multitude of friends are dead. Shortly after this conversation, Cocteau, too, was dead. Gogol, Stravinsky once said, died screaming. The Agalef died laughing and singing La Boheme. Ravel died slowly, and that is the worst. So, let's go now. I don't think it's open yet. No. I don't think it's open. Certainly, it's one o'clock. Voilà. Alors, messieurs, je vous quitte. Je vous ferme la porte. Et alors, je vous souhaite toutes les, les choses qu'on souhaite pour avoir un bon appétit, manger bien, bon euh, manger bien, buvez bien. Voilà.
Uruguay. Cameras follow Stravinsky as they have done for 55 years. The people of Hamburg wait for loved ones. Some say, who is the little old man? Others say, look, there goes Stravinsky. Now you make it out. Bravo, everyone. Beautiful, we have it. Thank you very much. Moment, 